Welcome. It's 6 p.m. Welcome, everybody, to the uh, Town of Halifax Finance Committee meeting. Um, in attendance, myself, myself, Fred McGovern, Joe Vertrano, Tom, and Cheryl. So we do have quorum at four people. Um, I actually hadn't looked at the agenda <laughs> for tonight, so I don't have it up in front of me. Linda, do you have the agenda? Um, I can pull it up. Yeah, I didn't see it either. Okay. Yeah, I just... I'm running late because I had an issue at work, so I'm not as organized as I like to be. Um, let me pull it up real quick here. Yeah. Here it is. I think we really actually didn't have any much on it, but then um, Carolyn yep, had I, mentioned that he added the yep. possible executive session. Sure, yeah. So we have the acceptance of minutes, budgets and articles, discussion of wage and personnel amendments, reserve fund transfers. I you can see that. New member review of electronic communications at open meeting law, the RFP for zoning discussion, any correspondence, public participation, calendar, or as may arise. So let's begin right off the top with the acceptance of minutes. I see Linda was nice enough to send those out. Um, so these are the minutes for 331. And so we had myself, Joe, Drew, and Cheryl there. Um, so with one of you, well, would Joe or Cheryl like to make a motion to uh, approve the minutes? So moved. Second. Joe, second, okay. Let's do a roll call vote then, Joe. Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Myself is a yes. Done. Done. Okay, let's uh, get into, uh, we don't have a lot of, let's get into the budget stuff. Um, Last time, Sandy had made mention that we could increase the water department budgets because they were self-funded. Is that correct, Sandy? Yes. Okay, now, my question all week was, does self-funded mean that means you're gonna see an increase in water bills? No. Okay. They, they can do it, they have a very healthy um, retained earnings and they can do it without touching the rates at all, the water rates at all. Okay, because that was my main concern. I don't want to be, you know, I have no objection to saying, hey, sure, what, why not? But then I didn't, right. you know, all right. the massive water bill increases or anything else like that. Yeah, no, no massive water increases. All right, so then which line numbers did they want us to revote on? The meters, obviously, right? Yeah. Line yep. 100, water mm -hmm. meters. Fred, just to note that Deborah Presswell is signed on Okay. Hi. Hi, Deb. Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, we can hear you, Deb. I am. So Deb, uh, Deb is joining our meeting tonight. Uh, as well. Oh, I have tape over this. <laughs> okay. So, um, so it's line one hundred. Hi, Deb. Hi. Uh, line one hundred water meters. Uh, I believe they wanted. Fifty thousand dollars. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yep. So, would somebody like to make a motion for line one hundred water meters in the amount of fifty thousand dollars? I move. Um, second. Okay. Let's do a roll call vote then. Joe. Yes. Tom. Yes. Cheryl. Yes. Drew. I mean Deborah. I'm sorry. Yes. Deb, yes. And myself is a yes. So, Sandy, you haven't updated the spreadsheet yet, then, right? No. Okay. I was not in work today, so um, I haven't done anything with the spreadsheet. Okay. So that would be 50000 there. Right. So they, an, are, yeah. they, um, are, they, do they still, are they still working down that big receivable that they had? I know that they were working really hard to collect because we had a, we had a big backlog. They are still um, working hard to collect that. It is higher than it has been in past years. Yeah. Um, and again, I don't have the paperwork with me. It had gone down quite a bit since um, you had originally asked. Um, I did pull the paperwork again last week just to, to see how we were doing, and they are getting closer, but okay. they are still working on it. Yep. That's great. Thanks. Okay. So um, I believe they also asked for an increase in the Line 102 water vehicle equipment maintenance. Yes. We, yes. we had approved 9,000. They're looking for 15,000. 
Okay, would somebody like to make a motion for line 102 water vehicle equipment and it's in the amount of $15,000? So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, let's do a roll call vote. Joe? Yes. Tom? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Deb? Yes. And myself is a yes. And then I believe we have line 103, Watertown Wells Maintenance. Um, we had approved 100,000. They are looking for 125,000. So would somebody like to make a motion for line 103, Watertown Wells Maintenance in the amount of 125,000? So moved. Second. All right, let's do a roll call vote. Joe? Yes. Joe, uh, Tom? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Deb? Yes. Myself is a yes as well. So I believe that wraps up the call. Please. Correct? Or was there something else we missed? I think that's it, but... Um... They had made mention of their secretary, their administrative assistance overtime, but I ne we never lowered that budget. So I'm assuming that that's still in there. Okay. I mean, that was mainly around the AR. That's why I was asking. Yeah. Right. Okay. So I think Sandy, the, the correspondence from, from, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the correspondence from last week um, that they submitted was to ask for, for an increase from 40 yeah. hours of overtime to 50 hours of overtime. So I don't know if that was in the original budget, Sandy. I can take a look at it. I don't have the paperwork with me, but I remember when Keith had asked me, he said it was, I believe they had already put it in the budget. Okay. So, and we hadn't changed it. So I will double check on it. So Sandy, based on what I'm seeing, I know obviously you said you couldn't update the spreadsheet yet, but from the expenditures, it looks like we still have the school stuff open as well as the data processing? Yeah. Um, yeah, the, because, well, I, the yeah because I didn't get there. Okay. Um, I would have done it today. Um, we had a family situation come up, so I was home babysitting my grandchildren. So No worries. At, actually, at their house. So. Mm -hmm. so if I look a little tired, you know, <laughs> you taking mm -hmm. care of a three-year-old yeah. three and a 10-month-old, it's, it's not tiring. used to it. <laughs> now, I mean, my quick uh, the envelope calculations say if Kingston and Plimpton passes the budget as is, so that we're on for that, we have no money left over. Basically, so, that's that's the way we're already part. Out. We're already partly into the three hundred thousand by yeah. a little bit. <laughs> if those budgets get passed um, as is. Now you did pass your information on to the school committee. The school committee is meeting tonight. Yep. Hopefully they will understand and um, they'll do what they can. I'm really hoping that they come down on um, the vocational. We, they were, they knew as of the first, um, how many kids were going, if they can bring that down a little. Sorry. And if there's any, they can do with SPED, which I'm not sure they can, but um, yeah, that might give us a little bit of leeway. Yeah, because again, I'd like to get above that $300,000 and maybe have a little bit to right. pick yeah. one thing <laughs> yeah. uh, to support or something like that. So uh, as I understand it, everything at least has been voted on at least once in the expenditure section. Yep. Take us over to articles. Um, Fred, could you go yes, back Charlie. for a minute? On the data processing, sorry. You did that. Someone's calling me. I'm going to, yeah, they're going to have to. Sorry, sorry about the phone. Um, I did talk, go over everything with Caesar. I think it was Wednesday night um, after you all met. So the two big, the reason for the increase from fiscal 21 to fiscal 22 is twofold. One, there is a mapping program that the assessors and the land use boards and departments are using. We got the initial um, subscription through, at least we're applying for it, through COVID money. What it does is get views, overhead views of the entire town at a much closer scale than what we've been doing um, before. And they get it every three months instead of, I think, once a year or twice a year so that all the departments can, well, for instance, for the assessors, it becomes much easier, aside from the interior of the houses, 
to do valuation work, right. especially if, um, you know, under COVID, but if you also have reluctant property owners who don't want you on the property, um, we get the overhead view. Same is true for land use in general. Um, we Both assessors and the land use departments can get a much better grasp of what might be happening where it can't be seen. Um, so that is a new cost of $7,000. The other is the emails. We have been on a program to get everybody emails, meaning all boards, committees, along with all uh, the employees of the town. And we bump that up from 100 to 300. Each email address costs a certain amount of money. And the cost for that also went up slightly from 21 to 22. The, we have to do all the backup work. We have to do all the security. And that's the other significant cost. I think even without that, the DP budget would have gone up slightly, but um, the major portion, I think it went up, what was about 28,000, something on that order, from fiscal 21 to fiscal 22. Those two things right there are most of the increase. Yeah. If the decision is going to be to level fund, um, I'm not sure that we can pull that off, but let's say you increased it for those things that we weren't doing um, at least at the start of 21 or um, so back of July 20. If we lock those two out, you know, then I need, I'll tell the assessors and land use folks, sorry, it's a one year subscription. We're going to be out of the business there. For the emails, um, I have to check with Caesar, but I'm sure at some point our subscription ends. And then we will tell everybody on the boards and committees, anybody else who we added emails for, that they've got to go back to their own emails, which in terms of legalities is a problem, not in the sense of you can't use your email for town business, but it's not a good practice. If someone's right. looking for public records, they in essence get to knock at your door at your personal email address and say, show me what you got. Right. Um, and this way, everybody who's on a board of committee gets to separate out their personal from their town of Halifax stuff. If someone knocking at the door says, I want to see all your town of Halifax emails. We just direct them to that email address and we can do it. Um, also, um, it, I think in terms of security, in terms of uh, anything like that, and for backup purposes, obviously, it's much right. easier doing it with um, municipal emails than private emails. So, you know, we'll do what we have to do, but of the two, or it's certainly say we need to get the emails done, even though that's a larger amount, but I would certainly be recommending both for the work that the departments do. Um, but whatever your decision is, you know, we'll do what we have to do. Yeah, again, we voted on the number. I, again, I don't have any problem with whatever you said, because again, I look at it, the emails can help us legally. So we don't have unexpected legal costs. So in effect, it could end up paying for itself with regards to that. And as for the the other software, if that allows the assessors to not have to put their you know, personal selves into danger and it gives them the ability to maybe update assessors. In other words, you know, people like adding a shed and not telling you that they added a shed, you're gonna find that out within three months as opposed to waiting whatever it is, three years. So, three, so in effect to me, that's like, well, that's sort of paying for itself too over time because you're gonna get that money up front a lot sooner. So personally, I don't have a problem with it. I don't know what the rest of the board feels. And I'll open it up to anybody to talk about what their feelings are. No, I mean, I think if there's an, R, if there's an ROI on the <clears throat> ortho mosaics, you know, on the, the different, on the aerial surveillance um, process, sure. Um, is that drone based, Charlie? I don't know, I can find out. Yeah, I'm just curious. I mean, I just wonder about privacy complaints from landowners. Yeah, I don't think it's drone based. I don't okay. think it's satellite it's down to that level, but I, I okay. will find out one way or the other. Okay. But I think it makes sense. It's going to pay for itself. Right. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? I mean, again, if we have, I mean, we can come back and visit this. I mean, this is what we're going to go to print with. Um, so if something else comes up and we have to increase something else, we can always come back and say, that doesn't work anymore. We're still. I mean, this is where we are right now. So yeah. we're locked in stone. But that's how I feel, and it seems like the rest of the board feels the same way. So I think the larger issue is 
poor Caesar's hours limitations. Have we I, figured I know. that out? Yeah. Uh, I like got one on paper hanger, the guy. Again, we're at to the we are to the point now where I said we after everything was done, if there are things that you want to add in there, we can add those in. Now, as I said, we went ahead and voted two percent for both schools, which would in effect say we have a little bit of money left. But in reality, we don't the Plimpton are gonna vote for the full budget. And and stuff. That's how I'm thinking that I don't really want to go into that number now agree, agree. again if we get a lower number from vocation let's say we get thirty thousand dollars back you know and at that point we can sit there and say great we have a thousand bucks where do you want to spend it but at this point at least my feeling is i'm not touching anything else uh, until i find out if we're going to get cost savings on the school so but yeah. again it's, it's the board's decision to do whatever you know, so we could take a vote on whether or not you want to do that or want to add things. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think we should wait. How about Joe? What do you think? Yeah. I about agree. Deb? Wait. I don't know enough about it. I'd like to okay. wait. Yeah, well, but what we're basically saying, Deb, is um, we we've come up with a budget, and the number works as it is now um, without going into what we call the levy amount that we kind of hold back. Um, so we could spend into the levy, although we mm. had made this policy a, a few weeks ago that we weren't, but again, we could change our oh. time. Yeah. So what we're basically deciding is, do we want to spend now or do we want to find out if we get some savings on the school and then come back and spend? So I think we should wait. Wait. Yeah. Wait, okay. Yeah. So, as it is, then we're going to close out the discussion on the expenditures and move over to the articles. Then, add up real quick. Um, so we voted on the yeah. This is an updated, so you'll have to. We we voted on the hallway flooring. We did that. Um, we did the tennis courts. The South Coast. So, if you want me to, if you want me to walk you through it, or what yeah, you have left to vote, yeah, that'd be great. So, yeah. all right. So, A four is coming off. That was the road work bond. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Steve Haywood has decided to pull that article. All right, okay. um, Charlie. We haven't made any headway on the purchase of land for municipal complex, have we? We're in the bidding process. Okay, so that's all. That's. That's something that unless we get figures, which I doubt we'll get before printing, we nope. um, don't we won't worry about that until town meeting. Yeah, um, so I'll be on the floor. Fifteen, add exterior lights to the HES campus. Um, yep. Matt Durkee pulled that. He said they're yep. going to be able to do it reasonably enough that they can fit it within the budget. Yep. Then replace hallway flooring. That is twelve thousand dollars. You guys have seen that. Yep. And we um, so you do that. need to vote on that one. That's we the did. kindergarten we hallway. Voted. Vote. We, we did vote on that. Last week. Voted. We did vote. Yeah, we voted that. Yep. Yep. We did. Yeah, yeah, no, no. All right. Last week. Yep. Um, tennis courts, we also. Silver Lake tennis courts, we voted on. Yep. Yep. The, oh, then maybe you voted on everything that we could. I think South, it is. South Coastal County Legal Service. That one, Charlie, yep. we were waiting to hear from them. Yes, and they are deaf. The board voted. Suckman voted on the 30th last week when they were reviewing the warrant to be the proposers for that article, for the advocacy, but not for the legal. We've never heard anything back from the legal. All right. So the legal, are we leaving it on or are we taking it uh, off? The, the board told me to leave it on. Maybe they'll you know, give me a call tomorrow for all I know. Okay. All right. So, well, the consider social 20. resource and adv advocacy, have we voted on that one yet? Yeah, we did that one last week. All right. Stabilization, we can't do anything with. The right, TNC is coming off. Um, the handicap ramp, we still don't have a price for. Town no, Hall parking lot repairs is coming off. Which one's The that? gas line to Town Hall is staying on, but we have no amount for that yet. Purchase of street lights is coming off. Street lights. The garage doors for the town barn at 21250 was that voted on? 
Um, can you remind me, Linda, what was that voted on? I don't, um, I don't believe you voted that yeah. one. I don't believe All so right. either. So, so, that one, so far that Sandy mentioned you did, you did either vote on or she made you aware that they were pulling them. Okay, so um, this is A47 for garage doors for town barn in the amount of 21,250. Does somebody want to make a motion for that? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All right, let's do a roll call vote then. Joe? Yes. Tom? Yes. Cheryl? Yes. Deb? Yes. Myself is a yes, so that one passes. Okay, what's A48 again? That's the fraud risk assessment, and that one uh, we still don't have a price on. I'm in the bidding process. Probably right. is in the bidding process, okay. So and then the Housing enough. Authority Plymouth County Retirement, we don't have anything definitive on that yet. Okay, so that takes... Was there anything else, Charlie? Was this anything that was added that I missed? No, I don't think so. Not, I mean, not since you were there at the meeting on the 30th, we haven't done anything since then. Right. Okay. So that takes care of basically all the A articles, uh, articles and A through. So we have, let's see what we have left on the warrant. Um, so did they vote on the article B1? Uh, did they vote on the zoning bylaw changes? No, you have not done that. They had the hearing with the planning board on Thursday, the planning board is recommending it. Okay. Um, do I need to read this whole thing out or can I? The whole thing, all five pages, 10 pages? Yeah. No, <laughs> no. no. Please. All right, so I could just basically say, um, it's article B1 to see if the town will vote to make the following changes as printed in the yeah. warrant received um, in chapter 1615 zoning bylaw flood plain district regulations or take any actions there on. I know it's about, Charlie, would you explain everybody else? Right, so basically it's two areas. One is two of the maps have been updated slightly. These are maps for land that are near the west side of Silver Lake. Um, basically what happened is Halifax is in two uh, watersheds. One is the Taunton and about 98% of the town is that. There's a section just on the west slope of the on the side of the west side of Silver Lake, where that water drains to Silver Lake and then goes eventually out to Cape Cod Bay. All the maps in the Cape Cod Bay Rivershed were changed. These are the only two that are changed here in Halifax. So that's one group. The other is that they updated a number of the definitions, also some of the text passages, maybe you know, the intent, the purpose. Um, and such of the bylaw so that, and these are all federal requirements that we have that information in the bylaw. So that's why those changes are being presented. So it's basically just a map up to what the federal government says we have to have in our warrant. Right. Okay. So would somebody like to make a motion to approve B1 as written? And the moved. <laughs> Second. All right, let's do a roll call vote then, Joe. Yes. Tom. Yes. Cheryl. Yes. Deborah. Yes. Myself is a yes as well. So that one passes. Um, I did see a couple other ones up here. I know we did Article A50, which is the middle school office resource officer. What's the, did we do anything? It says Article A51 to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate or transfer from available funds the sum of $15,000 for repair and replacement of the fence at the Lincoln Street Beach area. Right, that came in late. That's new, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen that one. Right, because that came in late a couple of days before the selectmen's meeting on Tuesday. Um, the park commissioner, AKA Tom Schindler, had seen me a few days ago and asked whether we met an article on the town meeting floor to, to repair and replace the chain link fence, which I suspect is older, not older than I am, but older than the time I've been here um, and is in disrepair. So he asked if it would be placed on the warrant. We've done that. I don't have a number. I don't have a presentation. Um, I, the 15,000 is based on, he said he had gotten quotes a year ago at 12. 
we'll yeah. have to go out and in everything. And of course, labor materials has gone up during the pandemic. So just to be safe, I bumped his estimate of 12 up to 15. But I okay. have nothing else. I mean, if you want to just put whatever you want to do, I mean, it's going to be on the warrant. Yep. Um, you want to say, you know, recommendation to town meeting and sometime during the next month, we'll have them in uh, to explain more, or, you know, work the process of getting quote we should be able to do before town meeting. What do you guys think? Do you want to um, put this as one of the ones that we'll um, I can't. after it goes to print and have the gentleman come in to talk about it? Or do you on it tonight. Could I ask, did it did it come up last year? Is that why you got bids last year? Did, was there a disposition on it last year? I don't I don't remember, I don't remember that. that. No. No. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So, sounds like the right approach then, Fred. To wait, just kind yeah. of uh, what do you think, Joe? Yeah. I agree. Carol? Deb? Yes. Okay. So we'll, so the plan is basically, this is one that we'll make a recommendation either on the town floor or prior to town meeting after we get some more additional information, right? Is that just, uh, oh, okay. Um, the PA system, do you know anything about that one? That's me. And it's just something that we've talked off and on about with Scott and with um, Matt Durkee. I'm returning Matt Durkee during the months of COVID in that we realized that the current PA system we have is I think believe is a four channel. Um, we if we continue having meetings up and even in the Great Hall, we need more microphones, which means we need a new PA system. Um, so, um, what are we left with? Um, I don't have a number. I have in this only. I finally got myself together even to write the article just a couple of weeks ago. So okay. I have nothing. Is it, I mean, it shouldn't be huge money. Um, I mean, I don't even know if it's going to be more than a thousand dollars. I haven't even priced anything out, but it's not. It's not like the fence, for instance, at fifteen. I'm not buying a PA system for fifteen. Yeah. So again, since it doesn't have a dollar amount, would the recommendation from the board be to just wait on that one and not make a recommendation tonight? I'll just go to print as finance committee recommendation at town meeting. We of course can make it ahead of time, but I don't I have. So I don't know what to, to tell you guys. So, so I agree. Later. I think we should wait. Yeah, I think so, Joe. Okay. okay. So that's what we'll do for those two then. Okay, let's go down after the five pages of floodplain legalese. On and on and on it goes. Yes. On and on and on and on. <laughs> I did read it. <laughs> Because I was like checking out the funny thing is I was talking about all these zoning changes, and yet none of our zones actually change. It's just new definitions. So, okay. So Article B two to see if the town to adopt the following ban on the sale of miniature single use containers for alcoholic beverages as a general bylaw and to insert into the code of the town of Halifax, which is chapter fifty five point four. The sale of alcoholic beverages in containers less than or equal to 100 milliliters within the town of Halifax effect January 1st, 2022. What? Um, it, I can't try to uh, ban nips. That's what it sounds like. Right. How is that, how is that a finance matter? How is that a finance matter? Yeah. That a, that a finance matter? <laughs> Again, every, every warrant goes up to the finance committee for a vote. <laughs> um, no vote. <laughs> no vote. I'm not voting on that. Fool. No, again, what we need to do is we have to, you know, we have to have somebody make a motion in a second and then we can do the vote. So I need somebody to make a motion on it first in a second and then we can do a vote. If you want to say no then, then you can say no then. It's all moved. Okay, I have a second. Okay, let's do a roll call vote then. We'll start with Joe. Yes or no? no? Tom? Yes. Okay, Cheryl? No. Deb? <laughs> no. And myself will be a no as well. So that no. one's not recommended. Well, I'm sorry, what was Joe's vote? No. No. Thank you. So, so Tom was the only yes. Fine. Okay. Now just, just to be ornery, that's all. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> That's all right, Tom. You know, let me get my nip out of my pocket. Tom Charlie's one of the guys out on the weekend picking them all up. No, yeah, I'm exactly that. Oh. I'm trying to take them out of my donkey's mouth. <laughs> oh, I can understand then. All right, Article B3. To see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to petition the general court to enact legislation to expand the membership of the Board of Selectmen from three to five, substantially in the form below, and to further to authorize the Selectmen to approve amendments to the bill before enactment by the general court, which shall be within the scope of the general public objectives of the petition, or to take any other action relative thereto. An act to increase the membership of the Board of Selectmen in the town of Halifax, be it enacted the Senate and House of Representatives and General Court assembled and by the authority of the same as follows. The number of members of the Board of Selectmen of the town of Halifax shall be increased to five. Each Selectman shall serve for a three-year term with not more than two Selectman terms to run concurrently, notwithstanding the preceding sentence at the next annual town election following at least 65 days after the effective date of this act one additional member shall be to shall be to an initial two-year term, and one additional member shall be elected to a three-year term. Nothing in this act shall term of those members serving as selectmen on the effective date of this act. So right off the bat, uh -huh. my question would be, how much is that extra election going to cost us? Yeah, right. Oh, I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. I'm missing something. Okay. According to this, yeah. to the effect, after, after the next, notwithstanding the sentence, at the next annual town election following at least 65 days after the effective date. So are you saying that we can just do this and we don't need a separate town election? Okay. So in fact, I may have done a little research, not pros or cons, just in terms of making sure we follow the logistics. All the communities that have gone from three to five have, you need the article of town meeting to pass. That right. sends legislation up to the state legislature. State legislature right. needs to approve it. Then, not the not an election of the candidates, but an election with a question on the ballot. Same question, in essence, that's on the town meeting. Yep. Then um, a town wide ballot goes on. So the so again, putting aside any views on the matter, we voted in May of twenty one. If it passes, it goes to the state legislature. Right. If sometime, assuming that they pass it in the next few months, then it goes on the ballot in May of 22 for an actual referendum to decide whether we go from three to five. Then if that passes in 23, you'll add the two more seats. And what will happen is the person who is up for three years will still be up for three years. Who's ever up in 23, I don't right now know what seat that is. Then, in addition to that, there'll be two other slots, one for another three-year term and one for a two-year term. So all that will happen. You don't need a special election at any time for any of this. Yeah. I, I, have, okay. a que I have a question. Go ahead, Joe. Why is it they don't all run at the same time like city elections do? Well, I think it's, I think it's to avoid... This is me. The, I actually worked in a town where that happened. You want to guess what happened one year? No, they all got disallowed. They were all, none of them were elected. They, re, they retired or they decided not to, uh, they lost. Everybody was for a one year term. Everybody ran every single year. Um, you can imagine there's a little dislocation when that occurs. And I suspect that the idea is the same. If you notice school committee, Planning Board, Board of Health, Board of Assessors, it's all the same system. No more than one third of the members or two out of five of the members are elected at any one time. So that there's some continuity from year to year instead of having suddenly you've got three people who may never have served on a board or committee before being placed on a board selectman and being asked to be the board selectman without any experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sometimes that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> right. So, um, so my next question is: obviously, there's an increase in cost because there's a stipend for selectmen, right? So you, uh, you assuming that everybody still paid the fifteen hundred dollars stipend, yeah, right. So, okay, so there is a small cost to this. Number two, how does it work? I mean, like right now, 
you have three members. Mm -hmm. Majority is two. Yes. You have to have two. Now, with with five, the majority is three. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens? Now, my question is, what happens in the period? Let's say it says, okay, we're going to go with five, but they're not elected yet. So then does the majority still have to be three? No. So until... Mm -hmm. so Let's, um, this year the election's on May 15th. Next year it's on May 14th. So that's in 22. So in 23, the election is on May 13th. Um, so starting on May 14th of 2023, you'll have five selectmen. Until then, you only have three selectmen. Okay. So the majority stays at two people until May of 13th, was 14th, whatever it is, of 2023 at which point people are sworn in, you know, there's a new meeting right, yep. you know, in May after the election, the elect officers, that type of thing. And at that point, you've got five. But until the election occurs, you've always got just three people. Yeah, yeah. because the last thing I want is like gridlock because all of a sudden you're in a position where one person can basically dictate everything because they can hold everything up. I just, yeah, not a good thing. Not a good thing. So I didn't want to create a situation where that could happen no no i mean i haven't been in a town where we've gone from three to five but mechanically that's what would happen you only have three members until the election actually occurs then you have five and the board meets as you mentioned with a majority of three okay now I, i've checked the surrounding town like east bridgewater plimpton they're all three it looks like there's like a no like, it's like ten thousand. it seems to be five i mean so, some past there. Yes. What you'll see is, in general, until you get to places that have town councils like Bridgewater's, yeah. town, then the larger the community, the greater chance you'll have of five people rather than three. And you know, right. there's no specific dividing line that says at 11,329 people, you must have five people. Right. It's, every town you know, handles it itself and makes its own decision. But rule of thumb is, the more people you have, the greater chance you'll have of five people. We would probably, if it passed, be at the lower end of those communities that have five. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking myself, because looking at some of the surrounding towns. I know, I know like Carver has five and Kingston has five, and we're not Kingston sized. So that's why I was kind of wondering, why are we doing this? But again, um, so, so I've said my thoughts. What does everybody else have questions, thoughts? I, I guess the only question I have is, me. I mean, maybe it's just a, a back-end question, but does, does anybody know, Charlie, do you know why to push the five? I'm not going to speak to that. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Oh, I, I can tell you that it's a petition article. Um, it's not been discussed with the board selectmen at all. The board hasn't had any discussions among the three members. I mean, Gordon obviously was the person who proposed it and – as to the reasons why he's not discussed them with me at all. So that, that was Gordon the selectman, not Gordon his father, right? Right. Yeah, I always get confused when I say Gordon because I don't know what it is. <laughs> so. so it's not junior and senior. So you have yeah. to the elder and the younger or something like that. Okay. So that's a different initial, I guess, though. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Looking forward to that. Okay. So ba basically, the, uh, to answer your question, Joe, a selectman is making the petition to add more selectmen. So he must have some reason to feel that he, we need the town needs to have more people. Whether or not that's a personal mm -hmm. thing or if it's a town thing, I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? None? Mm -hmm. All right. No. Well, then, I, then, no. Yep. Okay, so then um, would somebody like to make a motion then to approve Article 3? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay, so we'll do a roll call vote again, yes or no. We'll start with Joe. No. Okay, Tom. No. Cheryl. No. Deb. No. And myself is a no as well. So Article B3 is recommended. Okay, Article B4. 
which reads, to see if the town will vote to accept Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 71, Section 16G and a half, which would establish a stabilization fund for the Silver Lake Regional School District, <laughs> any action thereon. And Sandy, I believe you can talk about why this is a good or not a good idea. Myself, personally, I do not feel that it is a good idea. Um, one of the things that would happen is, and I, I did speak with Christine about this. She said that the amount that they would be requesting for the stabilization would go into their budget, like be part of their budget request. Um, what happens, we would be tied into giving, even if we couldn't afford to give, Mm -hmm. um, to their stabilization if the other two towns agreed to it. And then we have no say as to how they spend the stabilization. Right now, if they have a large project like the tennis courts, then they come to the towns, they ask, you know, that it be an article that we put in our share. And if we have the money, then we would vote to do it or not to do it, whatever. Oh. But that's the town of Halifax, because stabilization accounts in ha stabilization accounts take a two thirds vote right. of town meeting to pass. Yep. So it's two thirds to put money in and two thirds to put money to take money out. We would not have any say if we put money into this stabilization account for Silver Lake. We would have no say as to how that money is taken out and spent. Got it. So. To me, I feel that it, it's taking control away from the towns. And that's why I do not believe we should vote for that. Okay. Charlie, do you have anything to add? No, Sandy's right, period. Okay, um, anybody else have any questions? No. no. And uh, let's see if somebody would like to make a motion to approve Article B4 as written in the warrant. So moved. Do I have a second? And all right, let's do a roll call vote. Yes or no? We'll start with Tom, who's that now at the top of my screen? No. No. Um, let's see. Cheryl? No. And Deb? No. And Joe? No. And myself is a no as well, so Article B4 is not recommended. Okay, Article B5 is another <sighs> long one, which has to do with... Uh, Stormwater management. So, Article B5, I'll just read the top and then to see if the town will vote to amend Chapter 146 Stormwater Management of the Code of the Town of Halifax based on the recommendation of the Massachusetts General, and the rest is as written in the warrant. Charlie, would you talk to us about this one, please? So, we passed this back in September, um, but the PG's office said that the way of enforcing it, not enforcing it, but the the penalty system needed to be different than what was written in the bylaw that was passed in September. So that's the only change is how um, penalties are levied against violators. Okay. Anybody have any other questions? No. All right, then. Um, would somebody like to make a motion for Article B-5? So moved. Second? Second. Okay. Second. Let's do a roll call vote then. Tom? Yes. Uh, Cheryl? Yes. Deb? Yes. Joe? Yes. And myself is yes, so that is recommended. Okay, let's go down to C1. And I'll just read this one. Uh, Article C1, to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire, buy, purchase, gift, or eminent domain the fee to and or permanent and or temporary easement for bridge construction access and or related purposes in, on, and under parcels of land abutting Pine Street, which parcels are approximately shown on a plan entitled Pine Street over Cranberry Bog Overflow Right-of-Way Plans, a copy of which is on file with the town clerk. A said plan may be amended from time to time and land 200 feet of said parcel of land to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds and or borrow a sum of money to fund the foregoing and any and all costs related thereto, including without limitation, it down too fast. any land easement acquisitions and to further to authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter 
to any and all agreements and take any and all action necessary to appropriate to effectuate the foregoing transactions or take any other action relative to their town. So, um, what's that about, Charlie? So, Pine Street Bridge, the yep. one that in district there, we're still getting the engineering work done. I think we're aiming to try and get the work done later this year, um, if I remember right, from Steve. But as part of that, we're going to, part of the work, we're going to need easements on the four corners of the bridge, so to speak. So, the people on think of the Pine Street going south. The north, so the northwest corner, the northeast corner, the southeast corner, the southwest corner. We'll have to be going out and doing work on people's property as part of that bridge work. So we need to get easements. But in order to do that, we need permission from the town to get those easements. Okay. So if I remember right, uh, Steve got a grant to do the work on the bridge, but we really can't do the work until we get the easements. Is that sort of right? The, the grant is not going to suffice for the right. Just, okay. Um, okay. Um, he has money available in his chapter 90 account to do this. He's not coming back to the town for money, but I mean, he does need the easements. Yep. All right. Anybody have any other questions? Uh, just a question about the wording. I mean, Charlie, should we be concerned that it's sort of written like a blank check? Mm -hmm. Well, it, 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 I don't think are you looking for specifics in essence that we're going to get an easement on making this up, you know, 100 feet by 100 feet on the southwest corner. What would you be looking for? No, no, it just sounded, I mean, to me, it sounded like we were, we were purchasing these easements and there's no, there's no negotiation, value. appraisal. Is that, am I understanding that? Well, I think I'd have to check with Steve what his intent is, whether he, I, it's for, it's a, you know what? I, I'd have to talk to Steve. I think his intent um, would be not, well, I don't know what his intent is, let's put it that way. He's on vacation this week. Um, so if he needs money, um, and he needs money via this article, he'll need to ask for it through this because it says to raise an appropriate transfer from available funds and borrow some of money. So if he's looking for money outside of his chapter 90 funding, if he's looking for money inside this article, he's going to have to put in an amount. I don't yeah. have. Okay, so make the recommendation to our meeting to have that question and anything else answered. That's what I would do. And I, you know, like I said, you know, I can write him a note tonight. He's not going to see it until next Monday. Um, I'm going to run up the stuff. I'll be back. I'm going to run up the stuff. So, again, um, it sounds like um, there may be a question here as to whether or not there's some money involved. So it's mm. suggesting that we get more information. Does anybody else feel the same way? Yes. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. So do I, mean, I. I agree. I agree with his need for the easements and all that. It's just it's just the way it was written. It it's sounded not. like we were given like, yeah. It's yeah, it's better to be exact and clarify yeah. as to, you know, if you're saying that, you know, I'm going to get the money out of chapter 90 funds, then you should say, yeah. Source right. and use and amounts, yeah. All right, so I think we're all in agreement that Article C1, we will not do anything on tonight, and we will come back and make a recommendation. So the two, so for printing purposes, the Finance Committee recommendation will be at town meeting. Is there anything else we missed? The only thing is um, the wage and personnel. We're sort of... Um, a couple of the things that you've discussed and you've to a large extent assented to, um, I think, but I don't know that you've had official votes and some of the others, I don't have the information for you yet. I'm still working on gathering. I believe the ones where um, you, and again, didn't have official votes were to move those three positions, fire chief, police chief, and town administrator into the ungraded and set salaries for those in case those individuals didn't have contracts with the town. I believe you also were went with the idea of the changes the fire chief had suggested. Where we're the big one that I'm, I don't have all the information I want is the wages or and or changes of grades for the positions in six and seven. And I'm still working on that. 
And my intent is obviously to have something available to you. Certainly, I'm surely not hoping to wait until let's say May 3rd, um, but by the end of the month, um, because I'm still hearing from my colleagues from the other towns getting that information. Um, right. The other headache is the problem where it's not a problem today, but um, in the next few years, if the minimum wage in Massachusetts goes to $15, we're going to be in a situation where grade two, which used to be substantially higher than minimum wage, will just be just above it. Um, and what we're going to be saying, I think we had this discussion early weeks ago, is that there are positions in grade two even that we ask people to take a certain degree of responsibility for. Um, and saying, okay, it's a minimum wage job doesn't equate with a van driver, for instance, who has to take responsibility for people. Um, I don't have a great solution for that or even a good solution for that still because all of them, you know, it's either maintain the status quo, leave everything alone, that's how it is, or we have to start lifting those wages up, but then end up with grade four and grade six and seven even where either everything gets squeezed and all those grades are basically the same grade, or you need to then start increasing all the grades, which yeah. if you start increasing the wage rates for all the grades, we're right back, we're not right back, but yeah. the problem that we have no money right now. Yeah. Um, I, you know, maybe it's spent another year recognizing that the problem exists and at some point either we're going to make a formal decision that it's not a problem in a sense that you know so what the way the uh, grade two is minimum wage or we say it's a problem and we solve it somehow but it doesn't i don't think it's going to be this year yeah do we want to start like looking at maybe having you know like meetings in the summer to start looking at this because obviously this is something we're going to worry about right now, but uh, I prefer to, you know, at least start looking at what we should be looking at. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, thank you. The other, the other place, um, and it's a weird situation, is that um, for, this, for the, we have the mixed unit, which got newly formed a year and a half ago. Um, I think there's some con Concern about you know, this. I know you know what. I'd have to go in executive session, um, which I can do when we get we finish. Sure. Okay. All right. So we'll we'll postpone that discussion to the end because I'd like to do executive session last so that we can just uh, exit out of executive session and call it a night. Um, so moving on, do we have any reserve fund transfers? We do not. Okay. The next on the agenda is a new member review of electronic communication and open meeting laws. Now I. I asked this to be put on the agenda. I spent some time last week, uh, kind of was interested in what's going on with other departments in the town. So I spent some time going through the planning board's minutes. And I noticed that they had uh, an open meeting law violation, which was accidental. And Charlie's been telling us that um, with regards to not be having conversations on, as a group online or via, you know, or via email or via Facebook or whatever, social media you, you wanna talk about, because that could be considered that we're violating an open meeting law. So I wanted to kind of come up with like a, a, like a plan such as what I was thinking basically, like for instance, I, I did the report of the finance committee. I typed it all up. Now I could have just sent it all out to you but what I ended up doing is I sent it to Linda first and I figured, okay, Linda can disseminate it to everybody else. So that I'm avoiding having any kind of, you know, I'm not sending Joe and Tom and everybody else an email. I'm using our secretary as <coughs> respondents Fine. so that it, there isn't any kind of appearance of that. So that's what I, I kind of wonder what other people's opinions were uh, any uh, any other ideas? I just don't want to accidentally get slapped with an open meeting yeah. violation yeah. that we could easily uh, easily uh, you know. And it's easy to do. Trust me. Yeah. <laughs> Looking yeah. at the stuff, uh, it, was, it was real easy. 
the, even the, a bilateral conversation would count, yeah. right? Right. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Charlie, how do you distinguish this from executive session? I mean, we're going to, it's in the interest of the town for us to discuss things in a non public way. Yeah. In certain instances, right? No, I mean, well, executive session because it's a specific exception to the open meeting law. That you okay. Can, oh, got it. Okay. Yeah. For various reasons. Um, but, you know, like I can't send, I don't want to send out the, you know, like, hey, I put this together, like the, 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 the thing I could have sent that out and said, hey, everybody, look at this and let me know what you think. That would be a violation of the open meeting law. I just asked everybody to basically give me your opinion on something that we should, in fact, probably be voting on. Right. That's the, other, the other thing about executive sessions is they're properly posted. You have told the public, We're, for instance, today, it's like we met in executive session at nine o'clock. They began at nine o'clock. They voted to go in executive session at 9.01. They went in executive session. Now, as long as it was posted properly, it's all good. Uh, eventually, you know, once we deal with the matter that's in executive session, those minutes for that executive session can be made public. Um, so, for instance, we're talking union negotiations. Once those union negotiations some of why are done, if someone wanted to read the minutes, they have to I see. Thank you. Emails is that you've not told people you're having a meeting, that you're deliberating, so that the emails are looking like you're hiding something. If you start having a discussion via email, you haven't posted and you're not allowing the public to see your discussion. Right, right. So the first thing I wanted to say with regards to, like, if you want something added onto the agenda, it seems to me the safest thing to do is just send an email to Linda to, to ask to be added to the agenda. Um, I believe you have to have 48 hours, right? To be added to yes. the agenda. Right. So, but I, I don't, you don't need to ask my opinion to ask, add something to the agenda. If you want something added to the agenda, put it out there and when, and it's, if, as long as it's within 48 hours of the meeting, we'll, we'll do, deal with it that that meeting else will, it'll get put on the next meeting. So that's the first thing. Uh, and the second thing is, you know, correspondence. Like when I put together that school thing and I sent that all, that all out. I, I, I'm going any kind of correspondence. I think should also go directly to Linda and let her do the dissemination. I think if we use Linda as the focal point, we're covering ourselves. <laughs> you know I mean? No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> now, Great. I, She's about to get inundated. <laughs> yeah. now, I don't know. I don't know how it works with like. Like uh, I can't like I can't I'm running late and I can't make it to a meeting. I think that's fine. You can send that to to everybody, right? I don't think that makes a difference. Right. right. Yeah. So, uh, but anything that basically the way I the way I look at it, if you think you might be violating it, then don't do it. So, right. So, Understood. So okay. Anybody else have any comments or everybody in agreement with that kind of? Mm -hmm. uh, I agree. Yep. Yeah, me too. Okay, next on our list is the RFP for zoning discussion, which we've been punting for a while now. Um, do we want to get into that tonight? <laughs> sure. Okay. So we've got, we had a course. You want to tell us, Linda, you still have all that up, right? We've got... Uh -huh. How I'm many, sure I have it somewhere. I don't have it yeah. handy at the moment. <laughs> Charlie, did we? How many bids did we get back? Two. Just two. Yeah. Okay. Did the bids specify like how many articles that they could handle? No. The uh, what I said was, you know, outline how much work you think you actually are going to be able to get done, given more the money constraint than the time constraint, but with the aim of bringing articles to town meeting eventually in May 22. Yeah. Because I wasn't, you know, um, I seriously did not think we were going to get some, if maybe someone would say, well, I can do the whole thing for you. Uh, I think it's unrealistic to expect that. So I, on the other hand, if they only could do one or two, I think that's way under yeah. what money that we have, what I would expect. Right. And that, that was my concern. If they came back and said, Oh, we'll handle uh, multifamily housing and the new, you know, um, 
cell phone, that to me isn't a good spend, yeah, spend of money. You know what I mean? So that's why I was kind of like, Although you might might have to pay someone to put up with the town on the multifamily. <laughs> oh my, yeah. See, that's that's the thing. That's the other thing. I mean, again, I read through all the planning boards and 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 you know all the lawsuits and everything else like that. It's all, <laughs> it's all you could narrow it down and just say multifamily housing, and there's your problem in the town. It's like literally that's where everything grinds to a halt, and everybody's got different opinions. And and then as I read the the, the ZBAs, there's differing wording you know depending what your interpretation of the word of a specific word is it, uh so to me it's like the multifamily housing to me is the biggest issue that we need to take care of i so, might be able to get other stuff done if you didn't concentrate on it. i'm not trying to be funny. i know that's the that's the thing yeah. because Leave that's that the other thing it's like i sit there and say okay if we did that one what are the odds that's going to go that's going to get passed considering that Nobody seems to be able to, to agree with anybody on, on the multifamily. So then it's like, do we punch on that one and say, hey, let's do everything else where we could probably get a consensus on things and just, you know, I, I don't know. That's why I'm kind of throwing it out there. Um, I just, I do have the two emails with the proposals, but they're um, like 17 pages long each. So I don't think you really want me to run through them tonight. No, 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 um, no. If you want, I can resend them out. I think it's probably one of those things that you're going to have to look at the proposals specifically right before the meeting you discuss it so that you right. kind of have that to reference. But it definitely was um, two. It looks like yeah, Mayaris yeah. and Bobrovsky, I think, were, were the two that we got um, proposals from. Okay. And do uh, Charlie, do you have a sense of either one of those companies? work that they've done that sort of stuff i know them um you know i don't know them well but they're rep, you know very good reputable very, very good reputations okay if i haven't oh. looked, anytime looking at the proposals i'd be happy to do so yeah. uh, and, you know i'll tell you anything i see out of it okay I, i'm kind of curious as to again i don't have a i don't have a problem we've already appropriated the money it was on you know we agreed to last year I'm just trying to say what's the best use of our money. That's where I'm trying to get. Charlie's got a good point. If we get tied up in the family, even though that's the biggest issue in the town, is are we going to get so bogged down that nothing else gets done? Mm -hmm. um, so is that when we sit there and say, okay, let's not look at that one <clears throat> with everything else that we can? Um, or do we, you know, th these are some of the things we have to talk about. So is that inherent in the proposal or, or that's really? Our decision about how to direct the law firm once they start. So and neither firm is saying I'll do this or that. Well, what I asked they, them, they were telling us what they would do. Yes. Yeah. They were making recommendations of areas that they see deficiencies. Right. Well, of course, was multifamily right. housing, mm -hmm. um, which I knew was going to be there. You're right. Thank you. Uh, so again, that, that's what. I mean, if we decide to to go forward. I think the biggest question that, that is going to be what do we focus on, and that that's probably going to take uh, some some time, you know. And again, at that point, you guys are probably going to have to go through like I've done and read the ZBA and find out, you know, okay, is this something that we need fixed or, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, or yeah. like I did, go through the planning and see it, you know. Where are we having issues, uh, you know, with ZBA and that sort of stuff, uh, to maybe kind of provide some guidance as to to how we do we want to proceed? Um, so it sounds at this point like we all need to reread mm -hmm. the, the proposals and maybe slot a longer period of time for discussion as to what you think we can actually accomplish. So that's probably a larger meeting in itself that I don't want to spend a half hour, an hour tonight talking about, especially since we don't have, you guys don't have the references, um, reference points um, for the discussion at this point in time. Yeah, true. So um, I don't want to leave this too long because again, I don't know how long their, you know, Offer is good. offers are going to be. Um, again, We've pretty much taken, we can table this for another week and come back next week or the week after. I mean, next week we might have some more stuff to talk about 
you know, with with the schools, if the vocational number comes down, at which point we can look at other areas of needs and sit there and, and come back to what we talked about and said, oh, great, we have 30,000 bucks. Where do you want to spend it? That sort of stuff. Uh, right. that, that might happen next next uh, meeting. So, again, I don't know if you want to, when do you want to push it off to? When do you want to have a more hefty discussion about this? I'd say next meeting. I, I took the, I took their, their specifics as hypotheticals of the thinking that we would then direct them to things. But this, yeah. the, your point about multi-housing, multi-family housing is well taken. It's such an emotional issue that it doesn't matter what, how yeah. much we straighten it out, right? It, it's been, a, multi-family has been on the ballot multiple times, right, Charlie? Like different ZBAs. Mm -hmm. And it's like, different. and then they pull it and then it's, uh, it's like the never ending story. Yeah. Um, so we just do it next meeting, so we all get a chance to read it one more time. That's what I was. Uh, that's what I would suggest. But again, it's okay. like, do it tonight if anybody wants to do it tonight. So if the board wants to do it. Yeah. Excuse me. Can I, mean, I just I ask? Are you meeting Wednesday? No. 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 We're so you're not meeting again after we hear from what the schools' budgets oh. are going to be. Right. I believe uh, that. Because correct. we have to go to print this week, right, Charlie? No, the, the, this week. I mean, I, it's unfortunate in one sense, but um, again, you know, I've met, mentioned this several times. The warrant in the recommendations are going to change. I don't mean the articles, but the mm -hmm. recommendations, including Article 4, may change. We may be getting more state aid, for instance, which would change Article 4, for example. Right. So I, I, it'd be wonderful if we had everything lined up, everything done, but I never thought we would be that way because the um, house budget, for instance, doesn't come out until late April. So. All right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, even in the, one of the things, again, I read through all the recommendations of the finance committee. One of the last lines there is, please note that estimates may vary slightly as we get closer to the annual town meeting. We will right. most up to date information or really just relate as we see. Mm -hmm. So the, the thought process is when we talked about a calendar, we didn't think that we needed the meeting on Wednesday, that that it would only be Monday this week. It's too late to do a Wednesday meeting anyways, unless you want to do one at eight right. at night on Wednesday. Um, no. So um, uh, so at this point, I think we just move that to an agenda item, the RFP for next Monday. And we'll have a, probably our short conversations again with regards to the budgets and articles. So again, that will also be on the agenda. Um, so the agenda will be very similar to what we currently have on there, but I expect that the RFP will be um, a lengthier discussion next time around. So, okay. Any other question? Any other discussion on the RFP before we move on? No. Okay. So the next on the list is correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? We had none. Other than what I sent you. Right. Um. The next on the list is the public participation. Do we have any members of the public that want to talk, ask questions? Okay. Hearing none, let's move to calendar. So again, we do not have a meeting scheduled for this Wednesday. We should return, I would assume, then back to our weekly meeting. Starting on the 12th. I can't hear anything. And then, so, uh, so then on the 19th, will you not meet? I can I hear. Meet during the holidays, like on now, a holiday. Well, yeah, that's the, that's the question. So let's do our April calendar right now. So everybody's agreement that we have to do April 12th, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So is there a need to meet on the 19th? Hearing none, uh, um, then I would say we jump to the 26th as a necessary. The 19th is a holiday anyway. Right. So, so 19th is out. So uh, the 26th, the 12th and the 26th. When's town meeting, Charlie? What's that? The May 10th. Well, you basically got three more Mondays the 12th, right. the 6th, the 3rd. Um, so I definitely recommend the 3rd as well, just in case it's last minute stuff that we want to wrap up before town meeting. Yeah. So 
And then obviously, town meeting is on the 10th. Uh, we typically will meet beforehand. Typically, what, like we 30 minutes, an hour beforehand? Is that what we've normally done, Charlie? Yes. Yeah, so we'll have a meeting. Um, it'll be at the school. Uh, it, it'll be about an hour before town meeting. And what we typically do is anything that we still have marked as town, you know, uh, finance committee recommendation at town meeting, that's what we take care of. Because at that point, if we don't have a number or anything, you know, it really shouldn't be there. So um, that will be our last quick meeting before we get to, to the town floor. And we'll have a discussion at that point on how that actually operates. Uh, typically, you know, I, it's, I don't want to get into it now, but there's a process um, that we will follow um, when we get there. And I'll talk, we'll talk about that more when we get to that, that point in time. Okay, so that only leaves the executive session. So I believe we need to uh, make a motion to go into executive session with the intention that we're going to end our meeting. Uh, we're not coming back to this meeting uh, after executive session ends. Is that correct, Charlie? Right. So you're going to be going into executive session, and I may not. We may not end up discussing all these, but yep. history here. Patrol officers, sergeants, firefighters, highway mixed unit, all. Um, the bargaining units at the Halifax Elementary School and Silver Lake, along with the council. Right. As discussion of the town's negotiating position in public session would be detrimental to said negotiations. Okay, so you want me to state that? Well, I just did. Okay, great. <laughs> so I need somebody. So again, we are not coming back to our regular meeting. We'll be exiting executive session and that will end our town meeting for tonight. So our regular, our, I mean, our town, our finance committee meeting. So our regular finance committee meeting will be ending and we'll be going to executive session and not coming back. So I need somebody to make a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Okay, I need, we need to do a roll call vote. So <clears throat> Tom. Yes. Cheryl. Yes. Deb. Yes. Joe. Yes. And myself is a yes. So Charlie. What you're, we wanted to go into executive session. 